One of the most obvious, but in practice very hardest things to ask a partner, even one we name in our will and whose life is entirely entwined with ours, is, do you still love me? There would be so many reasons why they might not do so anymore. We might have driven them to the limit with our, admittedly at points, really rather challenging behaviour. We're not getting any younger. There are a lot of other people, especially at work and in the invisible parts of their life, who would have great things to offer them. It's hard to trust anyone, given what can happen. Furthermore, the signs aren't necessarily very good at the moment. They do spend a lot of time on their phones. They are a bit distracted. Their thoughts do seem elsewhere. We can powerfully long for reassurance, and at the same time, what we would need to get this reassurance presents terrors all of its own. It would mean revealing the extent of our vulnerability and of the scale of their power to hurt us. It would mean having to admit how much of our life is in their hands and how deeply we depend on their good opinion of us for our psychological survival. Sometimes the cost can feel just too high especially if we grew up in families where we got little reassurance that another person would understand our needs. It seems better not to ask too directly. At the same time, their disengaged manner is unbearable as well. In the circumstances, we may find ourselves carrying out one of the strangest manoeuvres witnessed in relationships. We may seek to get their attention accompanied by their anger as opposed to their attention accompanied by their love. We choose to pay the lower price of seeking signs that they remember we exist as an alternative to the far more arduous, rejection-risky task of securing proof that they still love us. So we wait until they're quite tired and fed up and then launch a volley of accusations. You never do much around the house. Your job doesn't pay enough. You've become pretty dull lately. Or, at a dinner with friends, we loudly tell a story about something that happened during their parents' messy divorce. What we're really trying to say is, I love you so much, I rely on you to give a sense to my life. But instead, we manage to work them up into a rage and ensure that they will say brutal things to us. Of course, their mind is now fully trained on us, but with a horrible irony. It's far from the kind of attention we were really seeking. We who crave their kindness, their enthusiasm, their warmth, their compassion, their tenderness and their constructive intelligence to engage with our needs are on the receiving end of their very understandable frustration, disappointment, wounded pride and self-protective anger. We should, when we can, have the courage of our longings. We should build relationships where it's natural and therefore not too frightening to seek and receive, on a regular basis, basic reassurance that, yes, we are wanted. We should make friends with our own extreme dependence and not see it as a sign of either shame or evil. Furthermore, when we next find ourselves on the receiving end of some utterly unfair accusations or aggression from our partner, we should bear in mind that they've probably not turned monstrous. They're simply trying to secure a reminder that we care for them, in the only way they know how, by driving us mad. Our Relationship Reboot cards inspire conversations that can help to rekindle love between you and your partner.